All right, so let's look at how to make some forward progress on the next part of the MP2 test. So at this point, I would strongly suggest that you have your course model completed and working. It's not really that much work and everything else in the MP depends on it. So if you haven't done that yet, pause, finish that up, um, and then we'll talk about how to uh, continue on. So at this point, we have a way to store information about a course that we need in order to display this extra screen that we're about to add as part of this uh, checkpoint. But we don't actually have the data that we need to populate that model. And this is sort of the next step of our understanding in the app. It's like, where does this data come from? So for MP1, when your app loaded up, it needed data to render that screen that you saw, right? So where did that data come from? This is another example where we expect you to mimic the existing functionality. And I'm gonna show you where that functionality is. And we'll walk through a little bit about how, how that works together. And then we'll talk about the changes that you need to make in order to finish MP2. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get come to my MP2 test suites and we're going in order. So at this point, you know, this is the old test from MP1 that we move forward just to make sure that your summary filter works. This is our course class test that you should be passing at this point. And now I'm gonna move on. And the next test I need to work on is this server course route. Um, and so I'm gonna uncomment this um, first. And one thing you'll notice is that this test does actually not cause anything to not compile if I uncomment it because the way that it depends on your code is a little different than some of the other tests. There's actually not an import dependency here. It's a different type of dependency. Okay, so let's run this test um, first uh, and, and see what happens. This is not, uh, just to make sure the test suites are still compiling and stuff like that, this should not work, uh, but we just wanna make sure that everything's okay. Okay, good. So what part of the code is this testing and what is this uh, portion of the code supposed to do? So this is another place where we expect you to examine some code that we gave you and augment that code so it does something new. And this is actually a very common thing to do in software development. It's actually really uncommon that you start a project with nothing. Typically, you join a project, whether that's an open source project or something that's being done by the company that you were hired to work at or whatever, and you are a part of a team that's been writing code and, and they've they didn't start from scratch either, right? They're working on something that somebody else had started before. So very few projects are actually started from scratch. A lot of them are started from existing code. And so it's pretty normal to come into some, some existing code, like the code we've given you, need to figure out kind of what's going on and then be able to add something. And that's really the core challenge of this checkpoint is understanding the code that we gave you and making a small change in order to, to add a new feature. Okay. So what this code does is this is the part of your app that provides the data that's used by the other parts of your app. So this uh, portion in server.java has access to all the information about the courses that your app uses, and it provides them in response to requests. Okay, so what is a request? What does it look like? And how do we respond? So let me show you actually an example of a request. This is something that's known as a web request. It's an HTTP request. So if you took this and typed it into your web browser, you would actually be able to see the same information that I'm seeing. Now, I wanna point out a few things that might uh, surprise you. This is not a web page. This is not an HTML document. This is data, okay? This is data in a format called XML, which is similar to JSON, but uglier, um, and not a format that we use for this project. But this is actually the same information about the CS125 course that you are going to be working with in this project. It's just in this XML format instead of JSON, right? So for example, I could go back here, I can open up uh, some of the information that we gave you, look for 125, uh, let's see here, we're actually, where is it? Oh, it looks like, <laughs> I'm finding all the things that are prereqs, but uh, it's the introduction to computer science. Uh, okay, this is, this is not going well, but you can find this. And if you did, the data will look very similar to this XML document. Uh, it's the same data, again, it's just we've, we've reformatted it a little bit nicer. There's a server, so there's a computer. I wanna kind of demystify this. How does this actually work? So there's this, a computer somewhere on campus, I don't know where it is, um, 
and it's located at the URL courses.illinois.edu. And when I ask it for this, so this is the uh, what's called the server name, which is this part, right? Um, and then this is what's called a path. So slash CIS app slash explorer slash schedule slash 2020 slash spring slash CS slash 125 dot XML. When I ask it for that piece of information, this is what I get back. And if you look at the path here, you might notice that it contains 2020, a year, spring, a semester, CS, a department, 125, a number. Those are all components of um, you know, some of the paths that you'll be working with for this. So we've modeled our server a little bit on the official University of Illinois server that provides this information. And again, this is the same information that's used by Course Explorer, by all the different tools that you use for registration and scheduling at the University of Illinois. Okay, so let's go back to our app. So right now, um, so when our server, when the client asks the server for information, the way that it asks is it sends it this piece of information. This is called a path. And then the server is responsible for, for figuring out how to use that path to uh, figure out what information to return. Sometimes the path is broken or incorrect or invalid, at which point you say that. Um, but if the path is valid, we want to return a valid piece of information. So right now, your server is already responding to a certain kind of request. Um, and the, the request that it's responding to is for what are called course summaries. So when your app starts up, the way that it renders that list of courses is that it asks the server, send me information, summary information about all the courses that you know about, and it gets back a big JSON document. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a capability on this MP checkpoint to return information about a specific course. In order to do that, the client, which is your app, and the server have to agree on the format of the request. And let me show you what that looks like. This is something that's covered in the MP write-up, but it's also something that you can glean from looking at the actual test suites. So let's look at the test suite here that we just started failing because we uncommented it. Um, and the way that the path looks is it says slash course, slash year, slash semester, slash department, slash number. So that's what things are going to look like. Um, and if you put some uh, logging or some print statements into your server.java, you'll see that that's what the path looks like. All requests that are made to your server, they start in this method called dispatch. And what dispatch does is it decides what to do with that path. And depending on the format of the string, the path is just a string. Depending on the format of the path, different things might happen. So for example, right now, what happens is if the path starts with slash summary, we call this get summary method. We pass it the path and it determines the summaries that it needs to retrieve. So in order to complete this, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to add support for retrieving individual information about courses. So when I ask for slash course slash, I think what's, what's the, What's the format of it here? So if I ask for slash course slash 2021 slash spring slash the slash 125, you should send me back a JSON uh, object with all the information about uh, one, the CS 125. Um, now, you might be wondering like, where am I gonna get this information? This seems really complicated. We've done a lot of the work for you. So there is this map right here. A map is a new Java idea that we're introducing in this MP. We'll cover it on a lesson, uh, a few lessons from now, but it's not particularly complicated. It allows you to look up something uh, based on another piece of information. So in this case, uh, what this map does, the string here is actually the JSON that you want to return. The summary is something that you need to construct. So what you do is you're, and, and let's actually write a little bit of this together. Um, so what I'll do is I'll add, the first thing I need to do is I need to tell my dispatcher that paths that start with slash course should be handled by this new method I'm about to write. So I'm going to write um, if path that starts with uh, starts with course, then I'm going to I'm and, and again I'm I'm sort of going to cut and paste here, right? Because I'm writing a very similar method. Uh, I'm going to put it down here below courses. I'm going to call this get course. And for now, what I'll do is I'll cut and paste this. 
and I will set the body to be an empty string. All right, so this is my placeholder for this method. So if the path starts with slash course, I'm going to return. And again, I'm just borrowing the same code from up here. So what we do when we have a request for a summary is we strip off the first part of the path by using this uh, replace first method. And we pass that. And I'm going to call it get course. Okay. So let me rerun my, uh, my test. And it's not going to work yet. We still have more work to do. Um, but it's going to fail a little bit differently, right? Uh, so now this has this problem because I set the body to be empty. Um, so how are you going to approach this? So my suggestion is understand get summary. So that's your starting point. Uh, look at what get summary does. Get summary does some things with the path, um, right? Um, and then it looks up information in this map. If it doesn't find the information, it returns it, it, it returns a certain type of response. And if it for, finds the information, it returns a different type of response. Your get course method is going to work very similarly. Your path is, has different parts. It has a year and a semester and a department and a number. So you pull those out, right? Then you use those parts to look up information in this courses map. If you find it, you send it back in the same way that get summary does. And if you don't find it, you send the same type of response. I'm not going to ruin all the surprises here um, and the work you have to do, but your get course method should be very closely modeled on get summary. That's the best way to approach it. The only important difference to realize is that this summaries map maps from strings to strings. So if you look at how we look up things, we create a string from the different parts of the path that we've identified. Your courses map looks up things by summary. So you need to take those different parts of the path that you're going to identify, the year, the semester, the department, and the number, and you to use them to create a summary object. And then you use that summary object to look up things in the courses map. Now, this courses map is something that we populate for you. You do not need to worry about adding things to this. That's actually done down here in this load, courses, load courses method that we already provided for you. So you don't need to worry about that. That's done. All you need to do is figure out how to look up something in this map based on the information that's passed to uh, get course. Now, the other thing I'm going to point out is that this map is totally up to you. This is a private map. If you want to change how this works, be my guest. I don't care. Uh, you have to change other parts of server.java, but we don't test this directly. The only thing that the test we cares about is does your get course method work? If it works, how you implement it is totally up to you. Uh, not, not concerned about that. Um, so as long as you know different things work properly, you know you should feel like you have full you know creative freedom here to uh, design this how you want. So this should get you going on Git course. We have it stubbed out. Uh, we have it added to my dispatcher so that uh, it's being called properly. And now what your job is is to review Git summary, develop an understanding of how it works and apply that understanding to get course, which is going to end up looking very similar. One thing I want to point out is that we have not shown you how to use a map yet. So this may be a stumbling block. If it is, ask on the forum for help. Um, if you can't, you know, you can certainly look up the documentation. You can look at uh, this method for a clue about how to use it. Uh, you can certainly experiment and see what works. Um, but if you need help with this, please ask and, and, and we'll be there for you. So this is how to uh, address the next part of the MP which is uh, setting up your server so that it can provide the data needed by the client. What we'll talk about next is how to uh, make the client, make sure that the client does the right thing and can actually retrieve the data from the server.